There we are. Hiya, my name's David. I'm the wandering ponderer. This week has been two years since I first started the wandering pondering videos and set up the channel. So I thought I would go back to where it all started, which is, which is here, the power station, or the substation as it's called, in Coggeshaw. My first video In that video, I explored electricity and I delved a little bit into uh, the universe and its electric nature. And uh, it's my first, that was my first video. I was a bit green at the gills, so my video skills were were being uh, being learnt by me and I've since invested in a bit more better sound and camera and etc but it I'll there I'll leave a little link just in case you want to have a look but the gist of what I was talking about was it's an electric universe now what got me thinking about this to today was that I've I've just got something that I've I've wanted for a very long time which is a plasma lamp. You know those plasma balls? I'll put a picture in. Well I was playing with it. Um, and uh, quite a fascinating device. It's got a Tesla coil in it. And Nikolai Tes Tesla, you've probably heard of Tesla because of the cars, but he didn't invent those cars. He was a very important man in the world of electricity. Tesla invented the, the Tesla coil and he experimented with electricity. And if you've got a Tesla, a plas plasma lamp with a Tesla coil in it, you can see how how it looks to be quite random. All the tendrils that come out from the coil, from the there's a ball of plasma on top of that coil. Um, the gases in the lamp show you that. That's what the gases are all about. That shows that up. And in a way, that's like a model of the sun. Exactly what the sun's doing, sending out flares every now and then but there's things we can't see that are going out from the sun but this is all in that video I explained a little bit about the electric universe or what's called uh, plasma cosmology so I won't go into that here I just for a historical perspective on electricity. I was thinking about Coggeshaw and I began wondering why I can't find a date and a time when electricity first came to Coggeshaw. With the, it's in the history books it's just generalized that around the 1930s um, the electric grid, what's called the national grid, was set up. And there's fascinating stories with the national grid. But I was specifically looking for a bit of Coggeshaw history. I thought, who was the first person in Coggeshaw to get electricity? And when the national grid was set up, and 
places like this substation were set up they had to run cables across farmland all over the country like a big giant spider's web that stretches out all over the country now I began to wonder well, were the farmers paid money paid money to allow these poles and these cables if you have a look around here you see all these electric poles we've got here and they go out go out down there goes off into the distance down there and there's there's some here there's one right there and then over here now this is a bit of farmland and if you imagine all these poles in the middle of a, a plow a field that the, is going to be ploughed and going to be uh, cultivated the farmer has to be aware of these things when he's driving his tractor and you know how much how much of a, a disturbance that causes on his planning and I began to wonder they must have been paid some money but there's nothing that I can find that was logged they're probably there in some form in, in history documentation but not easy to find and I began to wonder about the gas industry I've you know read, read up things about Coggeshall but it doesn't actually tell you when when all the gas pipes were laid and it doesn't relay the stories of how gas came to to Coggeshall and there's towns all over the country that uh, are probably in the same of their poor these are little snippets of history that could be quite informative that somehow this history has been forgotten and been lost swallowed up back to electricity there must have been the first person in Coggeshall to have a light bulb in their house most likely somebody who who was fairly well off in the 1880s electricity arrived in London 1880s now when it electricity was first first introduced everything was expensive so it was beyond the uh, the abilities of normal people to be able to afford electricity let alone buy the very very expensive lighting equipment so it was only in those times uh, wealthy wealthy people that could afford electricity in the 1920s in London there were quite a few different companies that were producing electricity and in the in the, around the areas different companies were generating electricity and selling it it was the new it was the new um, the new product the new fashion having electric light no more candles no more oil lamps no more gas lamps at the flick of a switch you can have light to read by to play your piano by not by candlelight anymore and back in the early days street lamps 
which were gas were converted over to electricity and it wasn't light bulbs it was carbon arc lamps which got very hot there's quite a history that is actually recorded and easily easily researched but there isn't for when electricity came to Coggeshall. Did Coggeshall ever have gas street lamps? I would imagine so. I would like to imagine so. Did Coggeshall ever have carbon arc lamps for street lamps? I don't know. I've looked at some of the photographs and it's, it's hard to tell. But back in the day, back in the 20s and uh, early 30s, we had electric trams, electric trolley buses all over the place. And they all needed electricity and that electricity was generated. And when it was first generated in towns, there were so many different companies producing electricity, they were different voltages. They were different voltages completely. There wasn't a unified system that there is today. We have a set national electric voltage of 240 volts. 240, 250. And that voltage is regulated. And the, the equipment we buy, we, there's not different types of equipment that we need. It's all a standardised voltage for mains electricity. So, back in the day, if you'd set your house up to receive electricity and bought these expensive bulbs and you had an account with a, an electric provider, you were stuck with the electricity that they provide at the voltage they provide so your equipment had to match. If you decided to move house and as happened on different occasions where people would just move maybe across the street or, or down the road only a little distance they found that that house had electricity but it was a different provider and it was different voltage so they had to go out and rebuy their bulbs they couldn't take the bulbs from the old house and use them in the new house because it was all a different setup and required different bulbs that's a fascinating little bit of trivia as far as electricity goes But that detail of history, not available here. I can't tell you when electricity came to Coggeshall precisely, but it did. It's here now. This substation that I'm standing opposite, this substation was built at some point. And these pylons arrived here exactly when they arrived in Coggeshall I can't tell you but I can tell you when the national grid was set up which is an interesting story in, its, in itself there were localized grids now there was a plan to introduce a grid system that would that would allow power to be shared from different power stations all around the, the local area. So it would cover a region and these localised regions, there were seven of them around the country, they were all independent but they were capable of being joined up although 
they had never been joined up nationally until one night, the 29th of October 1937. A group of electricians and operators decided without any authority to test the idea of a national, one big national grid that would supply anywhere in the country through the grid system. It hadn't been done, never been done. And yet on the 29th of October 1937, they without any authority, without any people in authority knowing anything about it, they, they managed to connect it up. The facility was there to actually connect all the grids together and they did. They rebelled against authority and they connected it all together and they were surprised, pleasantly surprised, how well the system worked for those two hours that they had it running. It worked better than they anticipated in the evening. Nobody knew anything about it, but obviously when the truth came out, there was a bit of anger, but they impressed people in higher places with this experiment to the point that in 1938, the actual national grid system was actually accepted and was operated. It switched on in 1938 officially. It started with a bit of rebel activity. I'm not endorsing rebel activity, I'm just quoting from history. <laughs>